How many of you love being at the beach? Whether you prefer the beach or the mountainsides, the ocean is one of the biggest ecosystems, covering our planet in an endless amount of life and water that we so heavily rely on. Now, how many of you, while at the beach, have seen something like this? I am willing to bet there is no way that seven billion people on this planet stop using plastic, and this is the result. Imagine a future where we take our kids and family to the beach, and its beauty and excitement is destroyed by our laziness. The generations of the future will forever come to know the plastic age that we live in today. Now, obviously, we are starting to take great initiatives to prevent plastic pollution. But we cannot ignore the plastic that is still being produced, still finding its way into our oceans, and the plastic that already dwells deep within our oceans. However, it's no secret that all the plastic that we use is so evident. It's even in the air that we breathe, and it's in the food that we eat as well. And due to our constant overuse of plastic, over the course of a year, it is estimated that 8 million pounds of it enters into our oceans. That's the equivalent to 200,000 fully loaded garbage trucks just pouring themselves into the water. And as a result, 70% of fish tested from markets around the world were found with plastic in them. So not only are we eating what we pollute, but it's in the air we breathe and the water we drink. Because of this, new studies are showing that over the course of a week, we ingest around 2,000 pieces of microplastic, which is roughly five grams or the equivalent to a weight of a credit card. And over the course of a month, a hanger's worth. So what exactly are we doing about it? Here in Cincinnati and other landlocked regions, the answer is likely making it worse. Yes, many states, countries, and companies like Adidas are actually banning plastic use. But what about what we have already used? Only 9% of plastic produced has ever been recycled. And think being in the middle of the country doesn't matter? Well, we're here to tell you it does. Around 90% of oceanic plastic pollution enters through riverways around the world, easily taking harmful litter and throwing into our oceans from hundreds of miles away. So aside from preventing plastic pollution, we should invest in initiatives that focus on the mass removal of plastics from our oceans. But how do we do that? Well, we built a massive robot that removes plastics from the oceans. I recall being half asleep in a high school public speaking class when one of my classmates got up and presenting on the topic of oceanic plastic pollution. I immediately was mortified but intrigued by it, and it woke me up. He was using facts and statistics like, by 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish, or every day, plastic is emitting harmful greenhouse gases, and you can find plastic from anywhere to the depths of the Marianas Trench all the way to the Arctic snow. So as you can tell, my curiosity didn't end after class that day. I remember going home eager to see who was out there working on a solution, and to my surprise, there weren't many people who were. I was extremely disheartened by the fact that something tied so closely to us did not have a viable solution. So, three months later, I came up with this. A mass scale machine that uses solar power and a water wheel to autonomously skim the surface of the oceans while separating the trash from the water. I did a lot of research to see if there was anything out there that was even close to it, and there wasn't. So I did what any regular 18-year-old would do at the time, and I started to build it in the garage with my dad. It took us nearly the full summer to do, and by the end of it, this is what we had come up with. I remember being ex extremely excited to take it to the neighborhood pool, throw it in the water, and see how it worked. But my excitement was short-lived when I realized that I had put so much time into something that didn't work out. This is the beauty of prototyping things, though, because it allows you to ideate create, and to continue to innovate the things that you are passionate about and work towards solving the problems that you care about. So through that, we were able to create today what we know as the ORCA, or the Ocean Rover Cleaning Apparatus. It is fully devised from the water wheel model, and as one logical suggestion led to the next, we were able to do some serious engineering and implement all aspects of it to be effective and efficient. 
The Orca is 100% solar powered and can produce over 125 kilowatts of energy at any given time. And this allows us to run it perpetually. So a big issue with manned beach cleanups today is it takes a lot of people and they only cover so much. By autonomizing the process and running this machine 24 seven, we are able to cover so much more ground and collect so much more plastic. We are all aware that autonomous driving and recognition software is the future of vehicle development. With this in mind, we can use this software and enter it into the Orca. It'll then go out and skim a set of coordinates which plastic lies within. In terms of recognition software, it'll be able to differentiate between what's fish and what's plastic. And if we don't have to drive it, then why should we? The best part is the technology is scalable and it is versatile. It can be sized up and down to fit rivers, lakes, oceans, and beaches. However, the current goal for us are the oceans at a massive scale. We believe with the dimensions of this 60 foot wide, 60 foot long, and 20 foot tall machine, we can clear up to 2,000 tons of waste per machine trip. And so with this newfound research and development done, I took another shot at prototyping it. This past summer, we took a small amount of donations, and I remember setting aside time from what felt like 9 a.m. to midnight almost every day, working on the business side of things and the fabrication process. And I'm not an engineer, so fabricating this wasn't the easiest thing for me, and we did run into a number of problems. The first being the whole system. I built the shell in the frame, and the holes were there to displace it and let it sit properly at the right water level. However, they displaced it a little too well, and they needed to work more as a ballast. After allowing them to fill with water, it weighed it down perfectly to the right water level the next morning. But not all problems that we ran into were as simple as this. The hardest part of the machine was actually building the conveyor belt. It took my father and I nearly a month to complete, and we went through a number of gears, motors, tensioners, and even fabrics and materials that were actually for the belt itself. But by the end of it, this is what we had come up with. This is our first small-scale prototype and our first proof of concept, and it's proof that there is hope that there are technologies and solutions out there to this massive issue. So, a machine that's capable of picking up 2,000 tons of waste, that's four million pounds. What happens with everything the Orca collects? In this day and age, there are many technologies that have discovered creative and innovative ways to reuse plastics. However, like I said before, the sad truth is that only 9% of plastic produced has ever made its way through a recycling plant. Over 300 million tons of plastic is produced globally each year. This massive amount is simply too much for recycling plants to handle, so as a result, only the highest quality of plastic produced ends up being recycled. One of these new technologies is chemical recycling. Chemical recycling repurposes plastics into oil, allowing it to be molded and formed into something new. This process is more environmentally friendly than traditional recycling practices, but most importantly, it does not burn the toxic chemicals that are found in plastics. Chemical recycling is a long heating process that melts plastics down into their monomer form or basic oil. This allows recyclers to repurpose all types of plastic, even things like styrofoam, to build new products that can be recycled an infinite number of times. Due to the recycling war, our hands are tied and we can no longer offshore the trash we produce, so in turn, we dump it into landfills in our oceans. Investing in chemical recycling will allow us to build a future upon a circular economy on plastic goods. These technologies are great for what has already been made, but what about what is still being made? We are aware that asking seven billion people to stop using plastic immediately is just near impossible, but we can start somewhere. We can start right here in this room. Every day we go through hundreds of plastic products without even realizing it, and it's in everything, down to our necessities, from what we use to brush our teeth to the plastic that we wrap our, our produce in at the store. And it's in the hundreds of bottles that we go through every week. So by making simple mindset changes, we can be more consciously aware of what we're doing and how it contributes to plastic pollution.
Like Michael said, there are simple solutions that are easily attainable through small lifestyle changes. Next time you go to the grocery store, instead of getting a case of 24 plastic water bottles, buy a reusable bottle and get a filter. When it comes time for a new disposable toothbrush, consider getting a bamboo one. And when you're checking out of the grocery store, instead of getting 15 plastic bags, consider using three reusables. These steps are so much easier than you could imagine them to be, and quite frankly, they're also much cheaper. As simple and as small as they seem, getting people to buy into these lifestyle changes can go a long way. We all know the law of supply and demand. At least I hope. So with mass efforts to avoid plastic, we can single-handedly slow down the production of new plastic and build the circular economy we need. Each day, take the challenge to live plastic-free and the change will show. We are the biggest fork in the road that we face as a civilization today. Don't choose the lazy and convenient route. Choose the route that pays a better future for us and generations to come. <laughs>